Hi there, it's Asia, and this is an updated video about true, false, not given questions in IELTS reading. I'm going to share with you my strategy for solving these questions, and we'll also discuss different tips and tricks that can help you. We'll have a look at some practice questions too. Okay, let's get started! <music> Well, almost all IELTS tests have at least one set of true, false, not given or yes, no, not given questions. And sometimes you just have one set, but sometimes you have a set of these questions in each section of your test. So you have three sets. It really depends. But it seems that true, false, not given questions are usually in the first or second sections of your test. And yes, no, not given is usually in the third or sometimes in the second section. Now let's talk about the answer formats. And what I'm about to say will surprise you. Okay, if you need to answer true, false, not given, you can write four words and you can write them in small letters, in capital letters or capitalize the first letter. It really doesn't matter. But if the answer is true, and by mistake you write yes, it will be counted as a correct answer. Even if you answer just why instead of true, it's still a correct answer. And I found this information in the official IELTS video. I know that many of you are surprised to hear that, so I will link this video in the description. And I'm also not saying that you should answer why instead of true. I'm just saying if you make this silly error, it won't affect your score. But yes, it is safer to just write true or false. And of course, all that is only for those who take the paper-based exam. Because if you take the computer-based test, you simply click on true or false. You don't need to type anything. Another tip for you is that you will likely use all three answers. True, false, not given questions usually come in sets of four or five questions, sometimes up to nine questions. And it seems that at least one will be true, one will be false and one will be not given. In the last test I took, I had six questions. Two were true, two were false, two were not given. Of course, I can't guarantee that you will have the same distribution. It may not be the case in your test, but there is a good probability that you will use all three answers. For example, you have five questions. Two are true, two are false. What do you think the fifth answer is? I would say there is a very good chance it's not given. In order to answer true, false, not given questions, first of all, you should locate the answer. You need to find that sentence or sentences which contain your answer. Okay, so first of all, you read the question. The good thing is uh, that true, false, not given questions come in order. You can read the first question, you start reading the passage, then you find your answer, you read the next question, you resume reading the passage and so on. So many questions in IELTS reading actually come in order. Some don't, but many do. And I have a separate video about it. I will link it below. You can do it with true, false, not given questions. Almost all of them, but not those that come at the very end of the test. These are uh, questions number 38, 39, 40. Sometimes you have several true, false, not given or yes, no, not given questions. So those may not come in order. All others usually do. Okay, so you read the first question. You need to underline keywords to remember what you're actually looking for. If you have any names, surnames, dates, that's great. They will help you locate the answer. But even if you have a surname, I still think that you should read the whole passage. You just don't need to read it slowly, trying to understand everything. You can read it fast, looking for your answer, but you will still get the general idea of what it's about. Okay, when you find where the answer is, you slow down and you look for your answer. Sometimes you can find the exact keyword in the question and in the text. But quite often those are paraphrased. So don't look for exact keywords, uh, look for paraphrasing. 
Once you've located the correct bit of the passage, you need to answer your question. And how easy or difficult it is to answer your question depends on where in the test you found it. Questions in the first section are usually the easiest and quite often you can find your answer in a single sentence. Those in the second section are more difficult and sometimes you need to read two or even three sentences to answer. And those in the third section are the hardest and you may need to read the whole paragraph to answer a single question. Be prepared for that. Now I've prepared for you several practice questions, but before we begin, I just want to give you several tips. The first one is, remember that the devil is in detail. You really need to be very careful and compare each part of your question and answer to make sure that the meaning is exactly the same. Cross out irrelevant bits, don't rush, make sure it's all correct. If it's false, there should be a direct contradiction and it should be quite strong. Not some tiny thing like a few people and several people, like that's the same. There should be a strong contradiction. Okay, I have several practice questions of different level of difficulty. Please count how many you answer correctly and then post your result in the comments below. Let's dive in. Let's begin with some questions from the first section. First of all, you should read the title. Why we need to protect polar bears? Now we know that the whole passage is about polar bears. Here is the first question. Now please pause this video and try to find the answer yourself and then resume once you're ready. Ready? Let's have a look together. In this question, we have a surname, Liu, and it would definitely help us to locate the correct sentences in the passage. Here they are. Now, we should carefully compare each part of the statement with that in the passage to see if the meaning is the same and the answer is true, or if there is a direct contradiction and the answer is false. Or we simply don't have the information to say if the statement is true or false and the answer is not given. Let's have a look at the question. The study done by Liu and his colleagues mm -hmm, compared different groups of polar bears. So I've highlighted the key parts. Now let's read the passage. A 2014 study by Shipping Liu and his colleagues sheds light on this mystery. Okay, we have the same study. They compared, here we have the same word. They compared the genetic structure of polar bears with that of their closest relatives from a warmer climate, the brown bears. If you don't understand some of the words, it's okay. Just try to understand the meaning and try to find the key words. So they compared polar bears with brown bears. But the question says that they compared different groups of polar bears. So what's the answer? The answer is false, because we have a direct contradiction. Here is the next question. Please pause the video and try to find the answer. Ready to continue? Let's read the question first. So I split it into several parts the polar bear's mechanism for increasing bone density. So polar bears have a certain mechanism that increases something in bones. Even if you don't know the word density, you can still deal with the question. So this mechanism could also be used by people one day. Let's read the passage. What's in the passage? If the mechanism of bone remodeling in polar bears so some words match mechanism and bone. And we can see that it's a mechanism of something that's happening in bear's bones. So it's safe to say that they're talking about the same mechanism. If this mechanism can be understood, many bedridden humans and even astronauts. Okay, humans and astronauts are people. Could potentially benefit could benefit is the same as 
could also be used and potentially means one day. So both are talking about a possibility in the future. This means that the meaning of the statement is exactly the same as the meaning of the sentence in the passage. So the answer is true. Now let's have a look at some more difficult questions from section 3. The title is How to make wise decisions. Here is a question. Please pause the video and try to find the answer. Ready to continue? First of all, we need to locate where the answer is in the passage. So let's read the statement. Students participating in the job prospects experiment. Okay, so we are looking for some information about the job prospects experiment. Let's read this paragraph. For example, in one experiment, okay, so they are talking about an experiment that took place during the peak of a recent economic recession, graduating college seniors. Okay, graduating college seniors are still students, right? Let's read on. They were asked to reflect on their job prospects. Okay, job prospects. And we're looking for some information about job prospects experiment. That's good. So that's the passage that we need. Now let's find the answer. Let's read the statement again to understand what the actual question is. Students participating in the job prospects experiment could choose one of two perspectives to take. So this means that there were two perspectives, whatever those are, and they can choose one of them. So let's continue reading the passage. Students were instructed to imagine their career either as if they were a distant observer or before their own eyes as if they were right there. Okay, so these are the two perspectives they are talking about in the question. In the question, they say that they could choose one of the two perspectives. But here, so far, we've read that they were instructed to imagine, but we don't know if they were told what to imagine or if they could choose. So let's continue reading further. Participants in the group assigned to the distant observer. Here, they were assigned to this group. This means they were allocated. They couldn't choose. So this is a direct contradiction. And this means that the answer is false. Okay, here is the fourth question. Please pause the video and try to find the answer. Ready to continue? Let's have a look at our statement first. What are we looking for? In the couple's experiments, the length of the couple's relationships had an impact on the results. So in the passage, we're looking for some information about experiments with couples. Let's have a look at the paragraph. In another study, couples Okay, so this is about an experiment with couples. So this is the correct paragraph. Now, what's the question? Let's have a look at the statement again. In the couples' experiments, the length of the couples' relationships had an impact on the results. Okay, so the statement says that depending on whether couples have been together for a long time or they just met recently, they had different results in the experiment. Let's read the paragraph and find out if it's true or not. In another study, couples in long-term romantic relationships were instructed to visualize and so on. Okay, so they are talking about relationships, but actually they are saying that in this experiment, all couples were in long-term romantic relationships. They've been together for a long time. And if you finish reading this paragraph, you will find out that this is the only mention of the length of relationships. 
there is nothing about couples in short-term relationships. So the statement says that the length of relationships had an impact on the results. But what's the answer? Well, we don't know if couples who met each other recently had any different results because they were not part of this experiment. The answer is not given. You know, quite often, if you can't find the answer anywhere, this means that it's not given. Here is the next question. Let's read it together. In both experiments, the participants who looked at the situation from a more detached viewpoint tended to make wiser decisions. They're talking about the two experiments we just read about, with students and couples. Can you answer this question straight away? If the answer is no, and you would like to read the two paragraphs again, here they are. Please pause the video and try to find the answer. OK, let's continue. Let's have a look at this statement again. In both experiments, the participants who looked at the situation from a more detached viewpoint tended to make wiser decisions. OK, so those who looked from a more detached viewpoint, they looked from the side, they made wiser or better decisions. Now let's have a look if that's the case. In the first paragraph, we can find that participants in the group assigned to the distant observer role so distant observer is someone with a more detached viewpoint. They displayed more wisdom related reasoning or in simple terms, they made better decisions. They made wiser decisions. OK, let's have a look at the next paragraph. Couples in the other's eyes condition. So they have a more detached viewpoint they were significantly more likely to rely on wise reasoning or they tended to make wiser decisions. So what's the answer? OK, the answer is true. In both experiments, participants who looked from a more detached viewpoint tended to make wiser decisions. There was a lot to read. But could you perhaps answer this question straight away without reading the two paragraphs again? I guess some of you could. And that's why I suggest reading all the passages in your IELTS reading test and not just scanning for the keywords. If you get the main idea of the passage, you're more likely to answer questions like that straight away and save a lot of time. And don't worry, you're not going to get many questions of this level of difficulty. This one comes at the end of the third section. So this is one of the most difficult questions in the IELTS reading test. We can say it's a band nine question. OK, how many questions could you answer correctly? Please tell me in the comments. And if you couldn't answer some of them, Please also tell me what was the problem. I'd like to know what difficulties you face and also how well my strategies work for you. If you remember, I mentioned that true, false, not given questions or answers come in order in the same order as questions are asked. Similarly, answers to many other types of questions come in order too, but some don't. And I shared my exact IELTS reading strategy and all the types of tasks which come in order and which don't come in order in this video here. Thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!